Hi, America here, and today we are back to State Trees. State Trees again for the what, fourth time, but you guys seem to like it very much, so uh, I am making a new video with another topic. And this time something I have been asked about a few times, and it's probably the most interesting use case after the AI. Uh, Statris, as you may know, is a system, a module, let's say, um, a tool, maybe. A tool used mainly and designed mainly for artificial intelligence, but it's broad enough that it can be used with other things, other systems. So one of the most interesting use cases is the gameplay ability system. Uh, if you are a little bit more knowledgeable, then you may already know that in Unreal Engine 5 we have a gameplay ability system, but it's oh, maybe mm, talking very lightly a mess, <laughs> I would say. I really hate gas, I don't like using it. And whenever I need to make an ability system, I just make it from scratch for the game I need instead of using that, well, bloated mess, right? <laughs> so, uh, with stage trees, it was actually quite fun making uh, my own uh, ability system, but the one I made for my project is very, very more complex. It's a combination of a custom component and uh, skill tree, well, not skill, skill tree, state tree, right? We are talking about state trees. Uh, so I'm not gonna show you uh, that one. I made something else that is oh, basically pure state trees and gameplay tags. And it's very simple, you can use it yourself in your projects and build upon it. So, what did I do? Um, I didn't want to create anything too crazy and I don't really have uh, animations for it also. So one thing I thought we could do as an example that doesn't require any additional assets, it's jumping. Because jumping is not a very basic movement and it can be a skill, right? So it's something that you trigger, it plays, and it stops, completes, and uh, you can trigger it again or trigger a different skill. But while you are jumping, uh, you don't want to allow player to uh, to trigger other skills. I mean, you can allow it, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment how to do that. But the basic premise is that uh, if you are using a skill, you don't really want to allow for any other skills to be used. Uh, so. What did I do? Uh, basically, this is a project that I already made uh, in my previous video. So watch that. If you if you don't know anything about this uh, this project, it's it's very simple. But I use it for showcasing state trees for AI. Uh, so we are back to that project. We want to open the third person character, and uh, yeah, let's state let's start from uh, event graph. And uh, this input action jump was hooked like that. So whenever you press jump, it wants to jump. And whenever you cancel the jumping, it stops jumping. So it's a very nice robust system for just jumping for movement. And it's uh, broadly used across different projects, but maybe you want it to be skill. Uh, and maybe you want uh, to add some custom hit events for, for that. So if you are in the state of jumping, maybe you want to have a different hit event triggers. Uh, you want to be triggered by different things, stuff like that. So you can't do that with, with the basic system. I mean, of course, you can do that. Everything you can do in... Uh, in the blueprint, in the <laughs> event graph, but maybe you shouldn't do. So, uh, how do we convert that to a skill? Uh, let's unpin that. And I'll 
quickly show you what I did. Basically, I made a new state tree called Better Gas. It's not a better gameplay ability system, but it's a very simple one. So in some way it's better and it works. Uh, I also made two state tree tasks based on a state tree base. So I use my custom state tree task uh, STTC base, which is based on uh, the blueprint base one. I showed that in the in the previous video, so watch that. Make sure to, to watch that before that one. Uh, and the first one, skill neutral, is just uh, an empty task. It doesn't have anything in it. Also, I didn't plug it in, but just for the sake of it, it should be there if you want to add uh, a custom hit events when the, the character is not doing anything, really. Uh, and then we added a state tree task skill jump, which looks like that. And what does it mean? I mean, what's everything here uh, do? On enter state, we want to trigger an event from event graph and just you know return the, the running state. And in event graph, on that jumping state, First thing we first we want to do is bind event from the context actor uh, to on character landed. So whenever the character lands, we want to go out of that state. And uh, here I just launch the character because uh, the animations are hooked in ABP many. So whenever the character is in air, it just triggers transition animation transition to uh, to jumping, so we don't need a montage. But if you had a skill that requires montage, so for example, attack, then you don't really want to or need to do that in ABP. You can just play a montage and pick the right montage and trigger transitions on completed on, or on interrupted or on, on notifies which I used very, use very, very often in my other projects, but in this I'm not gonna show you everything. Uh, so we don't uh, plug the anime montage because the ABP handles it for us and we just want to launch the character with velocity uh, 1500. Then on the character landed, when we land, we want to you know, finish the state, so return state succeeded and we want to remove the gameplay tag. And on exit state, we must make sure to unbind that event because the states are not destroyed, or as far as I know, <laughs> they are not destroyed uh, when the state changes. So everything that you bind in that state stays in that state. So even if the state is not active, if the event is bind, bound, uh, then it will trigger regardless of, uh, of the uh, state, state <laughs> you could say. Uh, so yeah, make sure to, to unbind it on exit state. And yeah, remove gameplay tags. I didn't talk about it uh, yet, but uh, that's something we want to do. And why do we want to do that? Because in character, uh, when we want to trigger a skill, we want to do it with a, a gameplay, gameplay tag. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you how you can uh, trigger some events from state tree and you do it with a gameplay um, events or how, how is it called? Uh, yeah, state tree event, which takes gameplay tag and origin. But origin, I, I am still not sure what does it do and I don't use it. So if you find a use case, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, to trigger a skill, we want to add a specific tag to, uh, to the gameplay tag container. It's of a gameplay tag container type. And we want to send that tag to the uh, state tree component. So yeah, we have a state tree component with a ST better gas. We have a, a container with, uh, with tags 
and we make a new function that we can trigger on when we want to start jumping. And that function takes just a tag. We check if the container uh, doesn't have the parent tag. So in this, in this uh, case, skill. If you, don't, and if you don't know anything about tags, uh, here's a quick tutorial. You need to, of course, enable it in plugins. And in project settings, you just go to gameplay tags and add tags. Uh, each uh, tag ha can have uh, a child. So in this case, we have a skill tag and the skill tag has a child tag called jump. So when we want to check a container with a tag, we don't need to uh, you know, check every single skill. If it's in the, in the container, we just uh, check the parent tag. So if we, you know, just check skill, it will check all of the uh, skill tags that are child's children of, of that tag. So that was a quick tutorial. And moving on in that function, we just you know, check if uh, it doesn't have any skills. If it has, then we can trigger a skill, of course. And if it doesn't, then we can trigger a skill and we do it by just adding a, a skill tag to our container and making a state tree even that we send to to the state tree and we just you know print so event is sent very nice it's working and moving on to to the state tree itself this is how my state tree looks so we just have a root that goes to no troll that doesn't do anything really and we have a state of jumping, which has a task uh, skill, skill jump that I showed you already. Let's compile and save, of course, so it doesn't. Uh, so we make sure it works. And this we can close because I, I made the montage from the jumping sequence, but yeah, I don't really need to use that. Uh, we can close that, we can close that. Yeah, uh, and state tree. I talked about tasks. This doesn't have any tasks, but uh, we can, of course, add a neutral skill. And then we have jumping. So jumping has a transition on state completed. So whenever the state completes, so whenever we set the return state to succeeded, we want to go back to neutral. So from jumping, if we stop jumping, we go back to neutral. And from neutral, we have a transition on even skill jump go to jump state jumping. <laughs> a mouthful, right? And that trigger is on event and even tag is skill jump. So that means whenever uh, we call this function on the state tree component, it checks if the active state has a transition with said tag. If it has, then it goes to transition to, right? So whenever we receive skill jump tag, we want to transition to, uh, to jumping. Basically, that's it. Only thing more I did is uh, picking the context actor class. So I picked a third person character. So we have a context actor and of course in skill jump it's as an input to uh, to use in that state tree task because without that context actor and class of course third person character we can't really remove tag because uh, the tag is just in that class. If we wanted to use different classes we of course can do that but the remove a gameplay tag would have to be an interface, right? And that's basically it. It works like that. We can move around, we can jump. In, uh, in air we can jump again, but whenever we land, we can jump again. And that's a very, very simple, basic example of how you would use a state tree for gameplay ability systems. So a little bonus uh, on the end uh, of the video uh, is hit events. 
So uh, one thing I talked about uh, before is every state could have a, a different hit event, right? So uh, normally you would uh, just do that in third person character. So uh, hit event, right? When you uh, get hit or even uh, point damage, that's something also used even point damage that's probably even better than hit because this is purely you know when we want to be hurt <laughs> or damaged so on that point damage we probably you know just take the damage uh, on that damage if let's say it's uh, more than a hundred right then we want to Launch the character, uh, launch character, velocity is this, let's say, and that's a very simple hit event, point damage. But maybe we want to have different point damage reactions depending on our state. So instead of that, I just delete that. We go to a state normal, skill normal, neutral actually. And in that we can do enter state. Of course we need, uh, <laughs> we need the context actor too. Context actor, we make an input, make sure to mark it as instance editable, editable and make the class of third person character then we can just uh, in neutral pick it or bind it here rather and then in that neutral we can get that actor uh, we don't we can do that here because that's an event we want to make so custom event uh, on neutral entered Let's do that here. Neutral entered, we get that context actor, point damage, bind event. On point damage. And now what we did uh, is that we bound uh, the point damage to, uh, to that state. So whenever the player takes damage, it goes to that state instead and triggers that, uh, that event. And everything we did, we can just do here, right? Very nice, very simple. And then on exit state, you of course need to unbind it. So point damage, unbind event, that event, and like that. Because we don't, of course, want to uh, have all the events taking place all at once. And as I said before, this still triggers when the state is not active, so we have to make sure to unbind it on exit state. So we have a nice point damage when we are neutral and when we are jumping, this of course needs a pin and launch velocity, say this, whatever. I, I know this is wrong, but <laughs> just for the sake of uh, you know, pin, we have that point damage in skill neutral, but when we go to skill jump, we don't have that hit event. So when we get hit, when we are jumping, we don't receive any hit event in that case but you can of course modify it at that point damage whenever you want and do whatever you want with with that system this is just a simple very simple elementary uh, showcase of how you would go about making such system so i hope you enjoyed hope you learned something and uh, if you enjoyed please leave a like a comment a sub maybe hit that bell <laughs> whatever 
and see you next time in the next video. Bye bye!